can't really say where I've been. See, I've searched the world over and I've done most things. Now I'm glad to be home again. My mother and father are waiting for me close by the window. Gentlemen, and as we continue this story, stay tuned because you know what? This is the real deal. This is not a joke. You hear about a young man that was caught up in the life of entertainment, wanting to belong, bringing in all the names of some of the biggest artists. This man has been through it, and all of a sudden, turn around now, success meant leading him towards drugs, drugs take him back down to the pit of hell of where his life was. And God picked him back up through the bootstrap, by his own bootstrap, but he had to have faith at some point. Somebody had to hold on and not give up on him. As he said, his mother never gave up on him. Mom brought food to him. He left a good, healthy house, a nice house. I've seen the home, and that house was a home. It wasn't just a house, because there was love there. But when you have drugs in your vein, you have a monkey on your back that you cannot get rid of, you need help. And this is what this ministry is about, to bring that testimonials to you, to let you know how people who were like you, who went through it like you, who is there like you, and how they got in and out of the life of drugs, heroin, cocaine, marijuana, whatever it is. There is the proof. I went through the life of the gun, the pimp, so on. I share that with you. Now I am going to find other men who have a testimony that will reach to let you know you are not alone. And you're never going to be alone as long as you stay tuned in this program. Listen, we have to say the thing like this. If drugs is not a, 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 a great, nobody use it. But the consequence, the consequence of the drugs, that's the problem. And many times we tell our children, don't use drugs, don't use drugs. No, we have to tell them the real consequence. Tell them, hey, drugs is good, you can feel good, but the consequence is fatal, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's worse. It's deadly. Yeah, deadly. Yeah, very uh, uh, that's the thing that I didn't get it when I was young. The real explainment. Now you have every um, um, prevention program right now, but yeah, but when I was at the, at the age at the time, I didn't get it. And so I felt I had money, I had money. So you had no problem. No problem to Why get it, yeah. And um, at that time, um, in eight, uh, seven to eight months, I have smoked, I have spent all, all, all that I got. Ooh. What mean money, my gold, my car. So I, I, how I, much did you say you were spending a month on your drug habit? No, look, um, when I start, when I, I, I enter in that, in, the, in that smoking, I had a bank account. Yeah. I start smoking, I don't want the job, I don't want to, I don't have to work because I have the money. Right. I, I was looking and seeking and running after pleasure. Mm -hmm. And without knowing, that's for a short time. For a short time. And uh, listen and believe me, when you go to see where I was, look, a friend that was smoking with them. Look, Salome, look. <laughs> I was smoking with him. Man, that was uh, 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 um, 11, 12 years ago. Yeah, I was smoking with him. With him. You understand? I was so. I was so. You were there. Yeah. With, 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 with clothes. With, I, was, I, I was dirty. I was uh, 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 dirty, 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 dirty. Nobody wanted to identify. Yeah. yeah. Before that, when I was removed, no, me, what you got for the next? What you got? When I was a junkie, nobody was asking me, how now, we? How can we help you? So everyone was going away from me. I was in the garbage looking every night for eating. I have to look for Kentucky to close, to go with the bar, bar, uh, garbage. Yeah, 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 for true. To see what to eat, yeah, what to eat, yeah, what to eat. That's for true, for true. And in the same place where we're standing here, 
I was here every day, every day, every day. This spot here. You're gonna hang out. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Action people money. Um, I have days which I'll take a shower. I, that was the life, a life of a real, real, real junkie. Our children are exposed to drugs and crime. I got a testimony and I believe I should share it with you. Tonight, a rare glimpse into one man's triumph and the life that he's left behind. This is my past. His story, a fight to reclaim a life lost to crime, guns, drugs, prostitution. His gospel ministry takes him to what may seem like pretty odd places, but as Jerry says, he's abandoned his past, not the people he's known. I'm not a preacher man that's coming with you, throwing the Bible at you, looking down at you. I am you, my brother. But with the difference, I made a choice. And the choice that I chose was Jesus Christ. Listen, my mother used to come to see me, bring in clothes, I go to change him for drugs. Sometimes my mother bring food, I go to change it for drugs. For so true. I prefer, I prefer, I prefer go to look for something to eat. In, in the garbage, I, I say, my mama loved me. She never threw me away. She came to look for me. She never gave up on no, you? No, never gave up. Never Mama's gave up. Love. Yeah, for true. But it was hard. It was hard. It was real. It was experience. But now I can say glory to God that I'm saved. Can you take me now to the next place? The worst is life now, that I can experience. How you arrive to this place that we're going to? Okay. Tell me about this place and what happened. Okay. At this place, at this place, I was waiting for the guy to pick me up at 1.30 because at 2 we had an appointment but from 1.30 I was waiting for him to come to pick me up he comes to pick me up I went with him, I went to a rehab I accept Jesus in his car I went and I, stay, I had stayed 6 months in the, in the rehab after 6 months my job called on me Mm -hmm. Because I was a good worker, mm -hmm. a good, good worker. I used to, to, to teach people in the newspaper mm -hmm. how to do several well, jobs. How did you get to the job? Because when you decided... The people, no, the people self oh. uh, look for me. Okay. After six months, I went to, to start working. Okay. But there was something. I had stayed six months in a rehab, but six months didn't work on my problem. What was my problem? That I felt in drugs. Okay. I didn't work in it. I didn't work to, to, to the breakthrough, to, to, to grow on my failure, okay. let's say so. Yeah, right. yeah. And one of them was the need of love. Okay. So and your needs were not met. It, drugs didn't do it. Uh, yeah. Because it couldn't fill the gap of you having needs. It, yeah. So basically, even though you were delivered from drugs, yeah. you were still have you still had a void. You needed love. Right. And after one month old when I started working, I felt again. So you went into relapse and you went back into it. No, no. That time. Mm -hmm. I decide, okay, I go to Miami. Mm -hmm. I went to Miami to a rehab. Okay. There I had to make uh, my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. There I start again with God. And now I can say, praise the Lord. Now God has changed my life. Now I know God. I know what God has, uh, has sent his, his son for me to die for me, he pay everything for me. Um, in, in Miami, in the States, I've learned how to pray, how to teach my Bible, my Bible how to listen. I've, I've worked. Faith. No, I've worked for a bad, uh, for a good, 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 good relationship with God. Praise God. Yeah. And today, what I want to share with the folks out there, folks, for all of you who are viewing uh, this program, I want you to realize that 
number one, share a little bit about how you heard about my ministry, because I want people to know what you're doing here for Carousel, what you're doing for your country in giving back. Okay. You're not just taking, you're giving back now. Okay. Two years ago, yeah. I started with a radio program, More Abundant Life. Yeah, from every morning, from Monday to Friday, from 6 to 7. And it's the most listened program right now on the island. Praise the Lord for it. And uh, during the two years and a half, I have brought a very, uh, uh, several men or women of God to Curacao. And once again, a lady came in and gave me a CD of Char Gary, Cherry Thompson. She said to me, listen to the CD and I will come tomorrow to get it. Till to now, I don't know, I don't have to see the lady again. She didn't come to, to collect his, <laughs> her CD. I have heard the CD. And before I, I put a CD on radio, a few weeks before, God told me that I have to uh, um, start encourage the people to put them down. That's right. That's right. And I thought, how the lady can know that? But it was God involved in everything. That's right. When I put a CD one morning and I start preaching, I start encouraging the, the people to put the gun down. In less than 50 minutes, I got three guns. Uh, a guy came with two 38 special. 38. Bam! Put them, Put them down in the studio. Yeah, that was in the studio. My God. I say, okay, praise the Lord. That's I pray for guys. him. That's right. He Put went. I take the phone, call the police. That's right. They come pick me them up. them up. After that, I was a lady. <laughs> They come with um, with her boyfriend. Right. No, they call, have called me. Norwin, we have a gun here. <laughs> Shall we? Uh, we don't want to bring them because if we bring them, we're going to the police. Yes. That's right. That's and right. And they go, they had to go to through it, <laughs> and they came back to me in the studio. That's right. One mother called me. They went and threw it away. They were yeah. going to throw it away. Yeah. Right. But after that, one mother had called me that he took a gun from his son. I go to the mother and gone. take it and go to the police, police with it. And give it to yeah. them. The next day, uh -huh. I had, um, for, because the first day, mm -hmm. the people start calling in the radio. Repeat the testimony, repeat Praise it, repeat God. it, repeat Hallelujah. it. And Praise we had to repeat it. Jesus. Yes. We had to repeat it the next morning. Mm -hmm. I enter again, I got crying, I crying. Got Here's armor ballots. Yes. I want to get up from this. I play with them, send them away, call the police, give the police help. More help-down. guns, more guns. Okay. At that time, mm -hmm. it was the second time. Yes. Still the people are calling, calling, calling. Okay, I, I decide that that day, at three o'clock in the afternoon, repeat the testimony Praise again Jesus. at the radio. Yes. And so at that night, I was driving my car. God told me, look for Jerry. Then I get a phone number. Yes. I start calling Mr. Thompson. No answer. No answer. I leave message. No answer. No answer. Till the morning, I have called. I got Mr. Gary Thompson. I was at out the phone. of the country. I was traveling a lot. <laughs> yeah. Folks, I want you to realize a man that was destined for death by his own, um, by his own means, trying to seek, thinking money was gonna get him everything, led him down into the pit of hell. God saw him, he called out to the Lord, and by someone witnessing to him, the same way he is now witnessing to you, his life transformed. Now God not only gave him a voice, but he gave him a radio broadcasting program to reach now the whole country. Where are the places that this radio station broadcasts now? Okay, you can, you can uh, hear it by, um, by radio at the Bonaire. Yes. But at internet, that I used to organize mm -hmm. all my programs. Up to now, it's free program in different neighborhood. I'm used. That's like uh, what we are doing. Put your gun down right now with Mr. Gary Thompson in Curacao. We have gone to different neighborhoods and 
We are right now in the period of a gun amnesty. I was fighting for that. I went to the, the to the people, to the to the court. I went to the minister, to the government, and seeking for help, seeking for guidance, seeking that they give me the this week for a gun amnesty, and I got it from the government and we yeah from the chief of police. And right now we are in it. It's a start. It's a beginning. That's right. Maybe you don't can see it with the natural eyes, but spiritual has to be a big thing, has to be a miracle of done. Yes, yes. My dear brother here, because of God opening his eyes to see from the darkness to the light, he has booked me for uh, 14. <laughs> Four. <laughs> He's working me like a dog. <laughs> he booked me for 14 appearances in 14 different communities where they're having this problem. The first time I came to Carousel, um, I understand of one of the first brothers that they introduced me to had lost a son that was shot from two gullet, gun bullet wounds, one in the head, one in the chest. Um, I remember seeing the newspaper also, uh, where uh, two was shot, one was lying down, face down. I remember when we were doing the gun amnesty with the two chief of police, while we were there discussing how it was going to be done and how the guns were going to be turned in and whether or not it was a murder weapon, how those people would be, would they be reprimanded or charged for it? And we were, we were deliberating as to how we were going to deal with it. We heard again that somebody else was shot. Yes. Now, the miracles that God has been doing in respect to uh, my being here in Carousel, working with you, the man with the vision for his country, I want you to share that each night how many people got saved over those nights and it's not finished yet not finished. and how many guns has also been turned in and what is taking place share that with the people first of all we the campaign the, the gun honesty is for the gun but for god the important thing is the soul the heart of the people and if we can promote the gun honesty but spiritually god needs the people need the soul and for me i'm working for the soul for the people that have to change that a miracle can um, that the people can experience a miracle of god what i had experienced in my life when i was there what, what, what you have seen before i think many people they didn't went so but they live in the darkness they live in the lost they live for that but I want to share the gospel the good news with them that's why um, Jerry is by us in um, this moment to share the gospel to share what God has done with it and I believe that everyone that here has change is going to be of happen already in Curacao there every night uh, many people, many souls that came to Jesus to say yes to Jesus, to receive Jesus in, the, in their heart. And that is the important work that I have uh, put myself to do for God. Gone, we don't can take the place without gone. But we can get Curacao for Jesus. And that's I'm working for it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, award-winning international gospel singer Jerry Thompson, who specializes in country and western, Caribbean gospel, and much more. This is a must-get. Call now. The number on your screen and receive Jerry Thompson in your home. We went to a neighborhood at Karkaraspa. We went to the prison. We had two services. And one day we had, I have, have took Jerry <laughs> for four, four services to do in one day. <laughs> we went to Subisan, we went to Marche de Pueblo, right. yesterday we was in Monteverde, tonight we are in Montaña, tomorrow we are in Brifajat, and we're going to close in Bandabo. That's, an, that's a big, 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 that's the other part of Curacao. Now he forgot to tell you some of the sweetest parts that a lot of you viewers are very interested in. Because what good would it do, profit a man, to win the world? 
people love you love me and we don't win souls souls is what we're really talking about we're not here to uphold the law we're not police officers we're here that through Christ Jesus all men that break the law may be free but not free in the sense of putting down their gun but receiving salvation on the first night we did a uh, I remember we, when we ministered the first night we had several people came up for prayer the second night I, re I remember when we ministered at the church um, we had uh, several people got saved yeah. and many came up with uh, problems and situations and they were healed of those yeah. those situations uh, many tears fell um, there was a man that they said that was crazy and he came up and he went down as sane as you and I are standing here yeah. uh, God does the miracles not myself nor Norwin we are only representative of the gospel we are not healers God is the healer. I want you to understand that. We don't do magic. We do not wave magic wands or do spells. We are strictly Bible sound, Bible words of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, I know that last night, we uh, over 20 people got saved. The night before that, about 18 came to the altar and these are young men yeah, yeah. between the age of 18 and 45 yeah. they're very hard to reach young women the same among the same age when we went into the prison there were women upstairs and men downstairs they were blessed they were anointed they did not want it to finish uh, we were there last night we the people in the community decided that listen guns are made for one thing they kill. How can we tackle this situation? We are not police. We are not, we don't control the border. We don't control the planes that come in, nor do we control customs. But what we do have control of is where our young people go and how our community is best served. So they said, okay, let's take up an offering and if the police can stop the guns and the government can stop the guns from coming in the country because there are no guns made in this country no guns are made in Coracell none not one all of them are imported like many other things that this country needs and guns is not one of the needs so what we did is we collected some money to because we know that men on the street who have their guns are not going to turn in their guns at free some of them won't do it at least the ones who are out there doing the killing and the shooting because why do they do this for money drugs trying to protect turf many many reasons but the bottom common denominator is money so how much was collected last night last night there was 930 guilders 930 guilders which is around what 600 700 us dollars yeah 500 500 us dollars that was collected more more than 500 so you're talking uh, that could uh, buy what a 45 i don't know because okay i, I would say it will buy about a 45 okay a gun a 45 millimeter yeah or a nine millimeter 45 nine depends a uh, new use Depends if it's ever been used. <laughs> if it was used, you can pick it up for, for 300 guilders. <laughs> yeah? But basically, last night the money was collected and given by the community. Another pastor approached afterwards and said, Brother Jerry, we've been confused as to how we can help to keep the guns off the street. I told them that the gun amnesty was given by the chief of police for this country. So if uh, a person comes by the church and wants to turn their guns in that they would be allowed to take those guns i'm gonna try before i leave curacao to see if the chief of police will allow a longer gun amnesty by pastors only those guns the pastor then told me that he is going to take up a special offering to give to those young men who wants to return their guns in I know some of us may not agree with that, but guns kill. Money doesn't kill. The roots of money, the, the love of money, is the roots of all evil. 
but guns kill. So would you prefer to have money out there or guns? If they stop bringing in the guns through customs, stop bringing in the guns through uh, plane and ships and so on, and we, the community, take a stand and say, we don't want any gun in this community, and we get those guns off the street, then we will have a better community. You must agree, for every one gun that comes off the street, that's one less we have to worry about. It's, it's, it's not ethical for us to be buying guns from drug dealers and gunmen, because we should not become um, buyers of guns and supporting criminals. I agree, but does that help to stop the problem? You need to think clearly. You're either part of the solution or a part of the problem. This is only one of the solution. I want to hear what your solution is. But if it's leave them alone and leave the guns, let them kill each other, that is not an option. We've been doing that. So we together and the police department and the community are trying our best. If you have any good ideas or better ideas, email me and share this testimony with me. Wherever you are in the world viewing this telecast, if I can do it in Curacao, and do it in Jamaica and do this in England. In Jamaica alone, 20 different communities I spoke in, 20 different schools, many places all over the world. Why not your community? Invite me there. Invite this man to come share the testimony, for me to share my testimony, why I put the gun down, and let the world be a better place. Thank you for tuning into Vision of Truth Outreach Ministry. Without a vision, the people perish, and without the truth, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. If this program has touched you and, and made a difference in your life, call now. We are here because of you, and we're here for you to reach you and the community. God bless you. Our children are exposed to drugs and crime. I got a testimony, and I believe I should share it with you. Tonight, a rare glimpse into one man's triumph and the life that he's left behind. This is my past. His story, a fight to reclaim a life lost to crime, guns, drugs, prostitution. His gospel ministry takes him to what may seem like pretty odd places, but as Jerry says, he's abandoned his past, not the people he's known. I'm not a preacher man that's coming with you, throwing the Bible at you, looking down at you. I am you, my brother. But with the difference, I made a choice. And the choice that I chose was Jesus Christ. Learning to lead. Lord, I'm learning to lead. I am learning to lead on oh, Jesus. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jared Equalize and I call the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me now. All you people out there want to be gambler. I beg you, please don't gamble because we lose the wages away. And the wages of sin is dead. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now hear this. On a warm and summer's evening. On a train bound from nowhere. When the roll is called up yonder, will you be there?